Hello everyone, I'm Eric Alden. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So for a long time now, I've been wanting to make videos a little bit more conversational, a little bit more down to earth. And I think I finally found a format that would allow me to do that. So, you know, I know this is going to be a little weird for you guys, uh, but be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, if there's anything I can improve on, or maybe if you just don't like this format at all, and, you know, go back to doing the other stuff. <laughs> you know, if that's how you guys feel, you know, be honest. But I think this could be a, an interesting style of video. So, yeah, let's keep an open mind. But without any further ado, let's get right into the story of Krampus. So, according to legend, Krampus is a horrifying cross between a goat and a demon. He appears during Christmas time as an assistant to Santa. He arrives on the night of December the 5th, also known as Krampusnacht. This also happens to be the night before the feast of St. Nicholas. While Santa is bringing the good children their toys, Krampus punishes the bad kids. In some versions of the story, he eats them, or brings them back to his lair to be taught a lesson they will never forget. And the more I look into this, uh, you know, the story of Krampus, it's like it changes, right? So there are versions where he takes them back to his lair, sometimes he eats them, sometimes he kills, sometimes he... Uh, tortures them for a year and then you know sends them back off to you know oh you learned your lesson so it's like really interesting to see how the story can change so much with just like one figure so let's look at some of the origins and where exactly Krampus came from well the exact origins of Krampus are unknown he gets his name from Krampen the old German word for claw Historians speculate that Krampus likely predates Christianity and goes back to Germanic paganism. He was likely associated with the St. Nicholas tale to bring some balance. He, uh, Krampus was the evil to St. Nicholas's good. And this is actually very fundamental when it comes to any narrative. So you need some kind of bad to your good. It's not enough to have good. You need to have an antithesis. Now, you know, if you think about religion... Uh, you know, you can't have, you know, God without the devil. You can't have, you know, Superman without Lex Luthor. It just doesn't work. You need to have some kind of antithesis. You need to have some kind of other thing, you know, the yin and yang. So, according to National Geographic, Krampus is the son of Hel, a Norse goddess who rules over the underworld, which also happens to be named Hel. I gotta, gotta love those uh, old Norse goddesses. <laughs> so, due to his many similarities with other figures in pagan mythology, he could be older than Christianity. And this is actually uh, a very prominent theory with Krampus, that he goes back a long way. So, some sources state that Krampus was only a spirit who taught young men how to survive on their own. So, before he became the bad guy, he, you know, was kind of like a, uh, you know, show you how to, you know, be a tough manly man, survive in the wild. You know, it's kind of interesting how he's like morphed into this almost demonic thing. And he's like almost the devil in most of the depictions of him. Krampus had not become an evil demon until the church took over European culture. And one thing I, I want to say on this is I'm sure most of you know that the church wanted pagans to convert to Christianity. And one of the ways they did that was by kind of blending the cultures. Oh, you can keep all the aspects of your religion, but we're going to bring them into Christianity and we're going to, you know, Christianize them. And that kind of was what happened to Krampus in many ways. Uh, although it was kind of like Machiavellian in a way, because it's like, oh yeah, you can keep Krampus, but he's the bad guy now. <laughs> so it, it's, you know, kind of funny how they do that. As Christianity and paganism fused, Krampus had turned into an entirely new entity. 
Krampus came to be seen as a punisher for misadventures. Instead of confessing your sins to a priest, you could rely on being punished by Krampus with a physical beating. This beating did absolve you of your sins, but which that's kind of like weird to think about. So he's not like a bad, bad guy. He's like a bad, good guy. You know, he like, you know, so if you've been cheating on your wife and you just happen to be walking through the woods and you get an ass beating from Krampus, don't worry. You don't have to confess your sins. You're going to be okay because Krampus absolves you of your sins. Yeah, there's <laughs> some weird stuff, man. Krampus's name comes from a certain type of German dialect specific to the Austrian Bavarian region. And that's not like too important or anything. I just thought I'd throw that little fact in there because uh, I kind of have this like weird connection to him. That's actually where a lot of my ancestors come from, that Austrian Bavarian region. So I, I have this like weird connection. Like, yeah, my ancestors made Krampus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, some folklorists have argued Krampus's phallic traits, such as his pointed tongue, tail, and birch twig whip, are evidence to suggest he is a symbol of fertility. Mythology and folklore often include demons or supernatural beings that breed with human women while they sleep. And I actually didn't include any of these like perverted pictures of Krampus. You can go online and look at them if you want. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I want to see, you know, Krampus getting it on. <laughs> I don't know. That, you know, whatever floats your boat, man. But there are a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, pictures from antiquity. And it's like weird to think about because back then, you know, there were significantly fewer paintings and pieces of art. It was, uh, there were like a handful. You know, today there's like, you know, you go on Google Images, you can find like a thousand you know, speed arts or paintings or digital thing, you know, whatever for basically anything that exists. So the idea that, you know, all these weird perverted guys telling stories about, you know, demons sleeping with women is kind of weird. And I even remember watching on like ancient aliens where the stories would be about these aliens coming down and impregnating women. And I know that even goes back to like angels doing that. So it's just kind of weird. I don't know if there's like some kind of creepy psychological reason for that because, you know, when you know these are like just stories, none of this stuff really happens. I don't know. There's like some weird aspect to that, but we'll leave that. <laughs> That's a topic for another time. To combat Krampus, German women dress as the goddess Frau Perta. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Who is known to drop a coin into the shoes of good children. Krampus has many similarities with other pagan creatures. And as you can take a look at this uh, here, you can see there are a lot of similarities. And it's not, actually, these are both Greek mythology. And it's not entirely crazy to think that, you know, there was some cultural crossover and maybe the people in this Austrian Bavarian region that, you know, the Alpine area, they took these ideas from mythology from the Greeks and they turned it into their like own little thing. Like they spun it in a way that it became a whole new creature. Uh, so I don't know. It's kind of cool to think about, uh, but it also kind of supports this idea that people don't have any original ideas, which is kind of true. I've been on the internet long enough to know. Yeah, it's true. Uh, anyway, so the 20th century, a point that's not about the 20th century, <laughs> there have been many attempts to ban Krampus going as far back as the 1100s. Those who sought to ban Krampus often did so because of his similarities with the devil. I'm sure a lot of people throughout time have kind of seen it as like devil worship because he does kind of come across that way. But you know, the more you look into Krampus, he, it's not the devil, man. He punishes you so you can you know, be absolved of your sins, or at least that's how it was for most of the time. I don't know. But anyway, uh, on to the actual 20th century. Krampus was outlawed in the 1920s by the Austrian fascist government under Engelbert Dolfus's leadership. And uh, this picture actually is of Engelbert Dolfus. 
So they blamed Krampus's creation on the Social Democrats, a political party that will be outlawed after a four-day civil war in Austria. And I actually really found this to be the most interesting part of the research on this, uh, that the Austrian government, and remember, for, if you guys remember from your World War II history, the Nazis absorbed Austria to become the greater, you know, this the great German Reich, a greater Germany. But the Austrians were not Nazis. They were like fascists, but they outlawed being a Nazi. Like, is that kind of like weird to think about? Like, there are like all these layers of gray when it comes to history. And it's like, wow. Yeah, it's like... You know, because most people probably think, you know, oh, yeah, the Austrians were Nazis, too. No, not really. It was outlawed. And then, I don't know. It's just, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I also find it kind of funny how they uh, blamed Krampus's creation on the Social Democrats. Uh, I think that's more of a, I think it says that a couple things. Uh, for one, maybe Krampus said, you know, was unpopular at the time. I don't know, but... Uh, seeing as the Social Democrats as a political party was outlawed under this regime, it kind of tells you, like, I don't know, Krampus was a bad guy, and they're bad guys, so we got to outlaw their political party. And, although I don't think Krampus played as big a part in that as, uh, as that. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, even after the fall of fascism in Europe, Krampus was still held in contempt with pamphlets going around calling Krampus an evil man throughout the 1950s. So, he was still held in contempt. Poor Krampus. Krampus did nothing wrong. Many point to the censorship of Krampus in the 20th century as the reason he is so popular today, making him a good example of the Streisand effect. And those of you who don't know what the Streisand effect is, it's basically where people try to censor or cover something up and then more attention is brought to that because of the censorship and being covered up. So a good example would be the Roswell, New Mexico uh, UFO scandal, the hoopla going on there. The government, you know, that at least the official, the way they portray it is they tried covering it up. And then all of you know, it's like, you know, Roswell, New Mexico is like, you know, it's like ingrained on the minds of America as this place where the, the UFO crashed. And, you know, that really could be what's going on with Krampus here because, you know, he was censored for all this time and everyone hated him. And, you know, you can't celebrate, you know, Krampus, he's evil. You know, so I think that does kind of explain why he is so popular today because it's kind of weird seeing this just like old pagan thing so popular today. I mean, I don't know. And especially, you know, this movie, you know, it's... I don't think it's a coincidence that they picked Krampus as opposed to the billion other mythological yuletide creatures. So, today Krampus remains one of the most popular figures of the yuletide season, gaining massive amounts of interest after the 2015 movie, creatively named Krampus. And as you can see, even before the movie came out, he was pretty popular. Uh, not as popular as Santa... But after the movie, he, he still had quite a bit of popularity. And who knows, this season he might beat Santa Claus on Google Trends. So be sure to be checking that, man. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the one battle we really got to be looking out for. And this is the interest by region. Uh, I don't think it's like too important, but I, I find it kind of interesting. Because there's like all these people that are like, oh yeah, Krampus. Kind of weird. Uh, and even more so by compared to Santa. So, Krampus in popular culture. So, Krampus, as I've already gone over the movie, Krampus has made appearances in The League, an American sitcom that I've never heard of. The Venture Bros, an action animated show on Adult Swim that I've never heard of. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, a popular roguelike indie game. I've actually heard about that one, and I think I've, I've heard good things about it. So actually, if any of you guys have played that, be sure to let me know what you think of that in the comment section down below. I might pick that up on Steam. 
does Krampus represent a cultural shift? I personally think that he does, and here's why. So, we've always associated with the holidays, the Christmas time, and all this. At least if, you know, you grew up in America, probably roughly my age. It's always been about consumerism. That was like the driving force behind it all. That's kind of how we view it. It's what it's really about, especially for the younger people. And I know personally, I always thought of Christmas, oh, I'm getting me some goodies. And that's how I viewed it until I was like, you know, in my late teens. Which just kind of sad to say because it should be about spending time with the family and appreciating people and doing good things and giving gifts. But it's not even really about that. You know, even when you're an adult, it's like, it feels like kind of hollow and, you know, oh, you know, I call my grandparents and I talk to my, you know, family that I, I don't live anywhere near. It's like, I don't know. It seems kind of shallow to me. I feel like it's like very arbitrary. Like if you really cared about your family, why do you have to wait until Christmas to talk to them or to, you know, show them any sign that you give a damn? I feel like it's very much... I don't know, bullshit, maybe, I don't know, call me call me a bad man, maybe I'm the Grinch, or I'm Krampus, <laughs> um, I don't know, and I think that Krampus kind of represents a pull away from this kind of uh, shallow, you know, let's put on smiles, and you know, I love everyone, and I think Krampus represents the, a pulling away from that, you know, a more darker, more realistic kind of, you know, bah humbug, kind of sense of the season and I don't know let me know what you guys think about that maybe I'm way off uh way off track there but it could be I don't know let me know what you guys think but that's going to be it for the video guys I hope you enjoyed uh let me know what you think of this new format uh I really hope you guys like it and if there are any things I can do to improve or do this or that better let me know uh so yeah see you guys next time peace out